Welcome to FootballGamePlan.com, where football makes sense. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook, bring you our NFL-NFC Divisional Playoff Preview between the Seattle Seahawks and the Atlanta Falcons. Now let's take a look at some keys to victory for both teams, starting with the Seahawks. When you look at the Seahawks offensively, you look at a team that wants to establish the run very early in the ball game. And against Atlanta, I would suggest running off tackle. We've seen the Falcons get a lot better on the interior. These guys are whipping guards, and now they're getting penetration and slowing down the running game. So if Seattle's going to have success, it's going to have to be on the outside. Now, with that said, the tackles have to make sure they attack those linebackers. They reach those defensive ends. That way, you'll open up those holes so the cutback lanes can be there. Now, for throwing the football, you have to look at what the Falcons do well. They have some outstanding corners. And if the receivers of Seattle are going to have some success, they are going to have to work for it. So guys like Golden Tate catching the football underneath and having to make one miss will be key. You may not get the big plays deep down the field. You're going to have to work your way down the field. So that's why these receivers catching the short passes and turning them to big gains will be crucial. So let's go inside the lab to look at the Seahawks secondary to see how they can match up versus a quartet of solid receiving options that the Falcons bring to the table. In order for the Seattle Seahawks to have some success versus the Atlanta Falcons, they're going to have to match up versus the Falcons bunch formation. The Falcons love to run plays out of the bunch. It creates mismatches. It creates those natural rubs and allows them to get the football in their hands of their big playmakers, Riley White, Julio Jones, Harry Douglas, and allow them to get downfield. Also opens up opportunities for Tony Gonzalez. And if the Seahawks are going to have success, they're going to have to match up. And here's how they can match up. Really, it's all about these four guys. You're Outside linebacker, your strong safety, your nickelback, and your corner. They're going to have to communicate. And this is a style of route the Falcons love to run. They'll bring the guy in motion and send him on a whip route while the inside receiver is clearing this out. So right here, as I have it drawn up, you want to get a bump. The linebacker and strong safety are the two that have to communicate because they're going to be responsible for the tight end. Linebacker is responsible for getting a bump to slow down his release so that way the strong safety can sit underneath it and get over there quickly. So this is how they're going to communicate. Get the bump. I'll release him to you. That's your guy. This is where the action and confusion lies for a lot of defenses. The nickel back and the cornerback fails to communicate and get confused and get caught in the trash and the Falcons hit big plays downfield. What's going to have to happen the nickel will say, okay, I have the inside guy or I have the outside guy. So let's say for the sake of this drawn up play, the nickel has the inside guy. Let's say this is Julio Jones. So he'll say, I have Julio Jones no matter what. He's telling the corner what he has. So no matter what they do right here, he knows as this play starts to develop, he has Julio Jones. Even if Julio Jones comes back underneath and goes to the concession stand, he has Julio Jones in this situation. So now as he's running his clear out route, he's, he's sitting here waiting for him to cross his face or get even, and now he's running with Julio Jones. Corner can spot on this route, and that's how they can play matchup defense. And meanwhile, they're trying to get pressure on Matt Ryan. So if the Seahawks are going to have success, they're going to have to match up versus the Falcons' bunch routes. Otherwise, the Falcons can't hit big plays in the passing game. Now, let's move over to the Falcons in this ballgame. And I honestly think the Falcons match up very well versus the Seattle Seahawks receiving core. I think they have an advantage, actually. You look at Asante Samuel, Dante Robinson, Thomas Deku. Those guys can match up versus Seattle's passing game. So they can get a little bit more aggressive in their front seven, in their pressure packages, because we know Asante Samuel can jump routes and make plays. Dante Robinson can jump routes. And we know Thomas Deku has been one of the more effective free safeties in cleaning up mistakes and making big plays on the ball. So if Atlanta's going to win, I think it's going to have to be in the secondary. And they have a solid group of guys that can make plays on the ball. Now, what you won't see is a lot of man coverage because you don't want to turn your back to a mobile quarterback. At least you won't see press man, which you'll see. You'll probably see a lot of off man, a lot of zone coverage to where those guys can read and react. Because if you turn your back to Russell Wilson, he's going to run right behind you. Let us go inside the lab to look at this Falcons offense, see how they can take advantage of the new starting defensive end, Bruce Irvin. The biggest news coming out of Washington last week was the injury to Chris Clemens, which now puts Bruce Irvin in the starting lineup. So if you're the Atlanta Falcons, you want to try to find ways to neutralize his outstanding pass rushing abilities by running right at him. And the way you influence him in the running game is by with motion and counters. And you see right here, we're going to have two plays drawn up. Broken eye, set strong right. Why? Because the Titans on the right side and we have the fullback flex to the right side. So everything shows 
front side run. They're going to come to this side. They're running behind the tight end. But what the Falcons can do to have success is bring the counter back this way to try to isolate Bruce Irvin, the outstanding pass rusher. So what we're going to have, you're going to have the receiver running up, receivers doing their thing, trying to pull the corners out. And what we're going to have, we're going to have the back, the back, well, the play side tackle is going to go and block down on that three technique. We're going to have play side guard going up to get this linebacker. We're going to have the center block down. Everybody's blocking down, showing this flow. Why? Because we're going to bring the tackle, I'm sorry, bring the, the backside guard around to kick out Bruce Irvin, put him on a big body, and we're also going to bring back around the fullback, counter step, shooting through the hole. So now you have two guys coming at Bruce Irvin, so either one he chooses will be wrong. Either he's going to try to take out the fullback, wrong move because he's cutting his side, losing contain, or he's going to be on a bigger guard coming around to kick him out. If he can win that battle, he deserves to stop the run, but nine times out of ten, a defensive end seeing a guard coming around, job is to hold his own at the point of attack. We know Bruce Irvin is not as big as most defensive ends, so this play could work for the Falcons. Down here, we also have a situation where we're going to have twins to one side, where, again, it shows like we're going front side. Shows that we're going this way. We have the two wide receivers over here, tight end on the back side. You want to influence Bruce Irvin to come up field. So that's why we're going to have to tackle. Influence block him, have him flying up the field, creating the sprint draw approach. We're going to bring the fullback around into the hole to take out this backer, hopefully springing Michael Turner or Jaquiz Rogers to daylight. So there's different ways the Falcons can attack the Seahawks on the ground by running right at Bruce Irvin. That's the best way to neutralize an outstanding pass rusher is to rush right at him, take his biggest strength, and make it his biggest weakness. The X Factor for the Seahawks will be defensive coordinator Gus Bradley. He's going to have to draw up some outstanding packages to get pressure on Matt Ryan. Let's be honest, the Falcons offense does put a lot of pressure on the defense. They can go up-tempo, they can slow it down, they can run the football, they can also attack you vertically. For the Falcons, it's going to be offensive line coach Pat Hill. If he can block these guys up front, the Falcons can have their way with the Seahawks defensive front seven. It's all about line play in this game. When it comes down to it, can you hold your own at the line of scrimmage? And that's going to be a big job for the Falcons this week. Now, here are some of my coaching points for both teams in this matchup. For Seattle, you want to situationally play Bruce Irvin. You don't want to subject him to those offensive tackles throughout the course of the ball game, only in past situations. So I would rely more on Greg Scruggs this week more than normal. And constant pressure on Matt Ryan. He's a guy that tends to backpedal in the face of pressure. You can keep pressure on him because you have outstanding corners that can match up one-on-one -on -one in press coverage versus those wide receivers. And don't get greedy offensively. We talked about the Falcons secondary being able to pick off plays. If you get greedy, they will get that football back for their offense. For Atlanta, you want to spread out the Seahawks. The Falcons quiet as kept can go four wide and weaken that Seahawks pressure because their fourth receiver or tight end is better than the Seahawks fourth cornerback and also you want to keep the tight end off the line of scrimmage why that's going to give you the ability to move him around the formation and see where the best possible matchup is to run the football it also allows you to dictate coverage and see how to could tip their hand just a little bit if you keep the tight end on the move and 11 guys to the football you got to bring down a running game you want to put the seahawks in passing situations so that way your corners can be aggressive and you can unleash that pass rush I like the Seahawks to win this ball game. When you look at a team in Seattle, you see a ball club that can run the rock, they can throw the football, they play great defense up front, they also play sound coverage on the corners. And when you look at the Falcons, you look at a team that can attack you many different ways throwing the football. Defensively, they have ball hawks. They look like the 2009 Saints with the way they can pick off passes. But I think their run game is a little bit inconsistent. So I think that's going to make them one-dimensional in this ball game. Look for the Seahawks to get pressure on Matt Ryan, which could result into some sacks and the, to a key turnover that could ultimately decide who wins this ball game. So I like Seattle to go into Atlanta and come away victorious. And I also want to give a huge shout-out to Seahawks fan forums and Falcon fan forums for always showing football game plan support.